Hey everybody, what did Ham do to his father Noah while Noah was passed out drunk and naked in his tent? The story is told in Genesis 9 verses 20 to 27, and it is a peculiar story, and it has some textual oddities in it. And I've been seeing a particular reading, uh, making the rounds on social media, that understands the uh, indiscretion to have been maternal incest, that Ham raped his mother, Noah's wife. Now, this, is, uh, this reading has become more popular since 2005 when it was promoted in a, an article in the Journal of Biblical Literature, but I don't think it makes best use of the data. I think the story is both more complex and more simple than that, and I want to talk about why. But first, I'm going to read this story, uh, Genesis 9, verses 20 to 27. Noah, a man of the soil, was the first to plant a vineyard. He drank some of the wine and became drunk, and he lay uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Then Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and walked backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. When Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan. Lowest of slaves shall he be to his brothers. He also said, Blessed by the Lord my God be Shem, and let Canaan be his slave. May God make space for Japheth, and let him live in the tents of Shem, and let Canaan be his slave. This is from the New Revised Standard Version, the NRSV. So initially, the story tells about Ham seems to see his father naked, tells his brothers they go cover him up. Noah wakes up, somehow realizes what has been done and who did it, and then curses Canaan who is the son of Ham, and it's not clear whether or not he's even been born yet. Uh, that won't be mentioned until the next chapter. But two questions pop up. A curse of slavery seems to be an overreaction to a son seeing a father naked. Two, why Canaan? Why not the one who ostensibly did whatever was done, Ham? So those are what immediately jumped to mind. However, it gets even more complex than that. Let's ask this. Uh, the text mention, mentions Shem, Ham, and Japheth as the sons of Noah. Now, in the Hebrew Bible, when they mention children, they mention them oldest to youngest. So, provided this, uh, these names are following that convention, and there's no reason to think they're not, Ham is not the youngest son. Japheth is the youngest son. But verse 24 says, Noah knew what his youngest son had done to him and then curses Canaan, who is ostensibly his grandson. Then, it says, then he says, lowest of slaves shall be he be to his brothers, and then mentions him being a slave to his uncles. So a lot of this can be ameliorated, resolved, if Canaan is actually the son of Noah and Canaan is the youngest son of Noah, if it is Shem, Japheth, Canaan, and Canaan is the one who did this. If that's the case, then that makes sense that his youngest son did it to him. It made sense why he would curse Canaan. It makes sense why he would say he will be a slave to his brothers and then list Shem and Japheth as the individuals to which he will be a slave. That's pretty strong circumstantial evidence that we may have a composite text going on here, or at least an amended text that Canaan was the one who initially did this. Ham has been read into the story, or a story involving Ham has been combined with a curse involving Canaan. And the story makes sure to tell you that Ham is the father of Canaan. So they are anticipating you wondering, what is Canaan doing here? Which is a hallmark of emendation or um, combination in, in uh, literature. So most scholars, most critical scholars, would suggest that this text has been altered, that it has either been uh, two texts are being combined, or one text has been amended to introduce the involvement of Ham. So uh, if we are unwilling, however, to allow for that possibility, then we have to somehow make sense of these complexities. And this reading that Ham raped his mother tries to read it as a unified narrative and comes up with a reason for why Canaan is the one that is mentioned. So according to this reading, Ham's seeing his father's nakedness is a reference to a sexual act. 
Uh, and Canaan is cursed because Canaan is the result of that maternal incest. Uh, Canaan is the illegitimate offspring of Ham's rape of his mother. And that's why Canaan would be cursed. So that makes sense of that in a unified way. Now, do we need to unify uh, the story? Well, let's, let's put a pin in that and come back to that. Let's talk about what happened in the tent. Uh, if we read See His Father's Nakedness as a reference to a sexual act, there is one reference elsewhere in the Hebrew Bible that supports that, and one only, because the usual technical terminology for a sexual act associated with nakedness is uncover one's nakedness. That's used over a dozen times in Leviticus alone, and always has to do with sex. See someone's nakedness only occurs once in clear reference to sex, and that is embedded within the context that is governed by this uncovered someone's nakedness uh, terminology. It says, if a brother marries his sister and he sees her nakedness and she sees his nakedness, then he has uncovered her nakedness. And then goes on to talk about why that's an issue and what needs to be done. And so there, see nakedness does not in and of itself indicate a sexual act. It indicates a, a parasexual act. The two are seeing each other naked after becoming married. So it's pointing in that direction, but in and of itself, it doesn't really indicate a sexual act. The uncovering the nakedness uh, indicates an illicit sexual act. Uh, seeing nakedness actually occurs more commonly elsewhere in reference to seeing shame or seeing vulnerability. For instance, when Joseph says to his brothers, you have come to see the nakedness of the land. And there are other occurrences of this as well in reference to people, to places, and to things. And so I think we're on much more solid ground to suggest that there is a dimension of shame associated with Ham seeing his father naked. And this is supported by the rest of the narrative, which has him go outside, tell his brothers, kind of like, he he guess what I just saw. And he does not do what he's expected to do, which is protect his father's honor. Shem and Japheth do. They go in, back in, they're careful not to see their father's nakedness and use a garment to cover up his nakedness. So they are protecting their father's honor. A straightforward, simple surface reading makes the most sense of this narrative in, in and of itself. The only reason we would try to peek under the hood to see what other acts might be um, placed between the lines here is because of the apparent incongruity with Noah suddenly cursing Canaan. But that incongruity is probably a result of textual emendation to begin with. However, not protecting a father's shame was a ser serious indiscretion in the ancient world and in ancient Southwest Asia and elsewhere in the Hebrew Bible. Not protecting a father's honor, excuse me, uh, being exposed to a father's shame and not doing anything about it, particularly if they're drunk. There are stories about sons having the responsibility to take care of drunk fathers as well to protect their honor. So Shem and Japheth meet that expectation. Ham neglects it. Um, additionally, if we read this as a sexual act, then the whole story becomes a metaphor, is non-literal. Because if we take Ham seeing his father naked to mean Ham raped his mother, then why the emphasis on the brothers being concerned for covering up their nude father? Why the emphasis on the brothers being careful not to do what Ham is said to have done? Let's go take this garment and put it on our dad so we don't accidentally rape our mother. That doesn't really make sense. Um, so the, the law of parsimony would suggest that the best reading is the one that requires the fewest assumptions and introduces the fewest additional complexities. And so the straightforward reading leaves only one complexity once we recognize the, uh, the composite nature of the text. And that is, why a curse? Why such an extreme reaction? 
Uh, and in addition to the fact that neglecting to protect a father, a drunk father's, a drunk nude father's honor is a pretty serious indiscretion, this is functioning as an etiology for uh, the desire to subjugate the Canaanites. Why should the Canaanites be subjugated to Israel? Well, look what they did way back when. Um, and so we can expect a little bit of an escalation of the seriousness when this story is being used as an etiology, as a way to say, this is why the Canaanites are bad. This is why they are under a curse. So the sexual reading I don't think is necessary. Introduces additional problems that it does not resolve. And I don't think is an accurate reading of the text. I think it's just straightforward. However, the sexual reading uh, the maternal incest or the paternal incest or the castration reading are obviously very salacious, which makes the text more interesting to us. Um, if I am being asked, what does this mean for me to say, oh, it's just an etiology for why uh, the Canaanites are to be sub subjugated to Israel and, you know, Ham just didn't protect his father's honor. That's kind of boring for most people. If we say... Ham raped his mother, and then Noah cursed the product of that maternal incest. That's more interesting. So that has value to readers who want the text to be interesting, to want it to be salient. Now, even folks who don't take the Bible to be authoritative, there is value in saying this. Not only does it make uh, an otherwise uninteresting text more interesting, but it can also be used rhetorically, pejoratively, to say, look how disgusting they, they were. Or to uh, polemicize, make fun of people who do take the text seriously. Look at your heroes. Look how gross they are. So there is rhetorical value in this reading that's going to make it attractive intuitively to folks. It's going to make it the most appealing reading for um, a lot of people if they want to find something interesting to say about this or want to find something useful in their in any kind of rhetorical campaign, either in favor of the Bible or um, unfavorably toward the Bible. And so this becomes an attractive reading. However, uh, I think the best way to approach this is as a composite text that is uh, using this concept of Ham neglecting his duties to his father to protect his honor when he is drunk, when he is nude. Uh, it, it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. At the same time, because of the textual issues, it is a lot more complex. Scholars have not figured out exactly how to disentangle those textual issues, uh, but I think the case is very strong that they are definitely there. Uh, and that this is a pretty simple and pretty tame and, uh, for a lot of people, pretty boring uh, etiology. So, hope that was helpful.